In the royal capital Paluma, the Demi humans are subjected to hard labor by humans, but our MC Banaza is different as he treats them equally and even pays them for their work. The Demi humans refuse to accept the payment, but being a goody two shoes, Banaza insists that they take the payment and have lunch. Seeing all this, the capitalist traders from America call him a hypocrite which makes Banaza wonder why they all can't live in harmony. Suddenly, Banaza gets teleported into another world where he's surrounded by priests and a guy who welcomes him to the magical kingdom of Clarode and addresses him as a hero candidate. Banaza cannot comprehend what's transpiring as the guy further tells him that he has been summoned to protect their kingdom from the Dark Army. He is then asked to place his hand on an orb that'll determine his magical energy. As soon as his skills get appraised, they realize that Banaza is just a pathetic loser who has no divine revelation. Just then, another guy is summoned from some other world and that edgy guy turns out to be insanely overpowered. Seeing this, the demi-humans and all the priests start simping over him. After this, the ugly king of this kingdom declares the other guy as the hero and Banaza is informed that he cannot return to his kingdom because the gate that was used to summon him is closed. They also grant him special permission to stay in the Delaveza forest. On his way to the forest, Banaza questions the demi-human escorting him some questions regarding this world, but gets completely ignored just as my crush ignores me. He then questions the demi-human if he's in a slave contract with the king. In response to this, the guy starts laughing and reveals that humans and demi-humans live in harmony in this world. He then instructs Banaza to bottle up and closes the door. Later on, as they reach the forest, the demi-human hands over a small pouch to him and warns him to get out of here if he wants to survive. After this, Banaza brings out a sword from the pouch and comments on how worn out it actually looks. Just then, he comes across some slimes and as he gets rid of them, he reaches level. 2 and all his stats also level up. Being dumb, Banaza fails to recognize the infinity symbol in front of his stats and he still believes that he's a pathetic loser. He also activates the voice instruction because he's a loner. The voice informs him that the pouch is imbued with a locator and another spell that attracts monsters. This makes him realize that the trash king wants him to die. Following this, as he is about to enter the forest, the voice warns him that the forest is heavily polluted by militia, which refers to liquid and gas produced by demons. The voice then asks if he wants to purify the entire forest and without thinking any further, Banaza agrees to this. Meanwhile, the princess of the kingdom confronts her good-for-nothing father for sending Banaza to the Delveza forest. According to her, it was their fault for summoning Banaza into this world, but the king doesn't accept his mistake and calls Banaza trash. Just then, a guy appears in front of him and reports that ultimate holy magic spell has been cast. Hearing this, the king believes that the hero must have cast the spell and gets overjoyed. However, the guy further reveals that the spell was actually cast in the forest where they sent Banaza. Meanwhile, Banaza utilizes a unique skill shapeshift to alter his appearance so he can venture inside town. While choosing the gender, he actually chooses female and turns into a beauty with massive melons, but transposes his choice immediately. This time, he turns into a stud. Now that he has altered his appearance, it's about time he ventures to Castle Town. The voice suggests using teleportation to move instantly as Banaza agrees using it. Upon reaching the town, he heads towards the guild where he is informed about everything related to being an adventurer. Since he cannot register himself as Banaza, he registers himself as Fleo, which is actually his old dog's name. After this, as he is looking for some random jobs, he notices a girl urging people to escort her to the Delweza forest, but gets refused by everyone. Seeing this, Bazana approaches her and offers to escort her. As they are conversing, he accidentally utters teleportation magic which shocks the entire guild. Just then, some other adventurers appear at the spot and label him a child trafficker for lying about using teleportation magic. To clear his name, Banaza urges them to accompany him, to which they agree. With this, he casts the teleportation magic and teleports all of them to the forest. This makes them wonder if he's not your average loser, but a high-level mage. They also apologize for their rude behavior. Meanwhile, the little girl is shocked over the fact that the forest is not covered in militia anymore. This makes the other women realize that this girl is actually a demon and threaten her to reveal her true identity. The girl takes their insult to heart and transforms into a massive wolf demon named Fenris. She was instructed by her brother to scout the enemy and gather the prey. The adventurers, on the other hand, were not expecting such a high-caliber demon to appear there. However, much to the demon's surprise, Banaza was not affected by her militia at all and decides to get rid of him. 
Bonazza has no other choice but to teleport the others back to the town and after doing this, he unleashes all his magic spells to defeat the demon. After teleporting the useless women to the town, Bonazza is up against Fenris the demon. With no other option, he decides to use all the magic spells in his arsenal and take down the demon. He even manages to dodge its attacks with the meteoric leap and then counterattacks with the whirlwind. The demon somehow manages to get out of the attack, but Bonazza traps it with gravitation magic. The monster attempts to escape using instant teleportation, but Bazana's AI dispels its magic and renders the monster powerless. Bonazza, on the other hand, is figuring out ways to seize the monster. The AI suggests using subjugation magic that will make the monster his servant, but Bonazza immediately rejects this proposal, stating that he doesn't want to make anyone his servant. The AI, however, keeps recommending him to use subjugation, but Bonazza persists in his decision. In the meantime, the demon's magic runs out and it surrenders, stating that a warrior without magic has no right to live. It further demands Bonazza to kill it, but he refuses since fighting was not his intention to begin with. Just then, he dispels his gravitation magic and frees the demon. This shocks the demon and it questions the reason behind it. Bonazza asserts that being a human or a demon doesn't even matter to him and he doesn't want to fight someone who has already surrendered. Hearing this, the demon transforms into a woman with massive melons. Bonazza immediately offers her his jacket as suddenly, the woman collapses. Following all this, Bonazza sets up a camp where he scans through his magic spells and remembers people deeming teleportation magic as something mighty. This makes him ponder why he can use such a magic spell. Meanwhile, Fenris also awakens from her sleep and notices that her magic has already been replenished. She then approaches Bonazza and questions if he casted healing magic on her to which he replies positively. Fenris explains that it would have been natural if she had been killed and skinned, but Bonazza saved her. She then pledges that she would never hurt humans again and acknowledges Bonazza as her master. Bonazza, on the other hand, refuses to be called her master, but Fenris persists, stating that she can carry his stuff or even become his slave. Bonazza refuses all these options, but after seeing Fenris bawling her eyes out, he allows her to accompany him. Following this, Bonazza reveals everything about his past and how he was summoned as pathetic loser. Even after hearing all this, Fenris vows to stay beside him. Meanwhile, the hero's entire army got wiped out by some magic beasts and the hero blames it all on the knights. The ugly king, however, doesn't trust and questions his knight about this. The knight tells him that hero pissed his pants after witnessing some monsters and abandoned his army. On this way to his room, the useless hero cannot figure out the reason his stats aren't increasing. Just as he is stressing about it, another woman with massive melons appears out of nowhere and accompanies the hero to his room. Amidst all this, Bonazza takes Fenris to the town and decides to get her registered with the Adventurer's Guild. As they are venturing through the town, a traitor mistakes them for a couple and Bonazza deems this a good strategy to avoid misunderstandings. This makes Fenris insanely happy since she always wanted a husband like Bonazza. Upon reaching the guild, Bonazza gets Fenris registered as Riss. Just then, the guild makes an emergency announcement regarding an urgent request to get rid of the Psycho Bears heading towards the town. Fenris suggests that they participate in this request, but Bonazza refuses, stating that he is way too weak. With no other option left, Fenris decides to defeat them by herself to prove that Bonazza is overpowered as hell. With this, they teleport to the location where the Psycho Bears were last spotted. Fenris is confident that she can defeat them alone, but Bonazza still accompanies her, stating that she cannot leave her alone. Hearing this, Fenris comments that they can even defeat the Demon Lord if they're together. Just then, they hear some women screaming and rush towards them, only to come across those useless adventurers from before. Seeing this, Fenris suggests that they leave them behind, but being a goody two-shoes, Bonazza decides to help them. Just as they take down the bears, the girls recognize Bonazza immediately and question him about Fenris. Bonazza introduces her as his companion which disappoints her. Suddenly, a psycho bear appears out of nowhere and ambushes Fenris who scares the living shit out of it and they decide to tame the bear as their pet. They even name the bear as Sib. Following all this, Bonazza takes the useless women to his house where they introduce themselves as Bailarasa, Blossom, Bailari, and Bulano. Even though all of them are knights serving the king, they urge Bonazza to take them in as his students. According to them, the hero's army was wiped out by some psycho bears and the hero blamed everything on the knights. Now, the king wants the knights to be capable enough to take down at least one psycho bear by themselves. They also admit that they are weaklings and want Bonazza to teach them. 
Bonazza wants to help them, but he is just as useless as them, so it would get difficult for him. He then reintroduces Fenris as his wife and upon hearing this, Fenris agrees to training the useless women. Now that Bonazza has agreed to help them, the women have another request. They want him to let them stay in their house and for some reason, Fenris agrees to this as well. Meanwhile, the Demon King has been reported about the purification magic casted in the forest. This shocks him as he demands to locate the human who casted such powerful magic alone. My man Banaza wakes up to Fenris staring at his face which shocks him and he questions the reason behind it. Fenris reminds him that they're a married couple and are supposed to stay in the same room. Banaza remembers that Fenris was prepared to get laid last night, but he refused her polite offering, stating that they should officially get married first. He then offers to sleep in the living room, but Fenris asserts that Bailarasa and the others would suspect their relationship. With no other option left, both of them have to sleep in the same room. In the present, as Fenris is helping Banaza get undressed, Bailarasa appears out of nowhere and misinterprets this situation. Following this, Bailarasa and the others go up against a psycho bear and get absolutely folded. This makes Banaza realize that they are just as useless as Aqua. Bonazza then allotted them a room to stay in and they shamelessly accept his offer. Just then, Fenris calls them for dinner and much to their surprise, she has prepared some raw meat for them. Seeing all this, Bonazza suggests that it would be better if she cooked the meat, but Fenris fails to comprehend the reason behind it. Realizing that he is surrounded by useless brats, Bonazza decides to prepare dinner himself. Fenris, on the other hand, was a bit hesitant to try cooked meat, but after taking a bite, she fell in love with it. The following day, Bonazza and Fenris take all the psycho bears they had captured to the Adventurer's Guild which shocks them as they fail to comprehend how a single individual can capture such mighty numbers. The adventurers inside the guild are also talking behind his back because they have nothing better to do. Fenris then seeks consent for venturing into the town since they still have some time before the assessment. Just then, a guy named Lilith approaches Bonazza and introduces himself, revealing that he wants to discuss something with him. As Banaza follows him into a room, Fenris also leaves the guild to learn cooking from someone in the town. Lilith tells him that his fame has spread all across the country and after hearing about his accomplishments, the king wants him to serve under the hero. They will also grant him knight status and even though the guild doesn't want to let someone like him to leave, they want him to save their sorry asses. Hearing all this, Banaza concludes that he has no reason to fight those demons and refuses their offer. With this, he leaves the guild and comes across Fenris, who is all worn out. This makes him wonder if she got into a scuffle or anything. Fenris, on the other hand, cannot believe that cooking was that difficult as during her first class, she literally blew up the entire kitchen. Meanwhile, the useless hero is enjoying his time with some women who tell him about an adventurer who is insanely overpowered. Even though the hero is a pathetic loser, he still brags about his strength and demands to bring Banaza under him. Exact one month has passed after this offer and the castle is still pestering Banaza regarding this matter. Meanwhile, the useless women are doing everything except training and Belarasa is even seeking Banaza's attention by acting weak. Fenris, however, is not giving them a single opportunity to score their goal. With all of this going on, a mysterious person with cat ears is stalking them. Later on, Fenris prepares dinner for all of them and much to their surprise, her cooking has improved a lot. Fenris reveals that she has been taking cooking classes in the town recently and it seems like her hard work is finally paying off. To top it all, she even made curry for Banaza. With all of this going on, the mysterious Catwoman has recognized Fenris and is shocked to see that the most feared warrior in the Demon King's army is now cooking food for her husband. Just then, Fenris appears behind her and addresses her as Illuminas. She takes her inside and questions her regarding her actions. Illuminas reveals that she is here to investigate the area, while pondering about Banaza and Fenri's relationship. Even with her appraisal skill, she cannot read his stats. Illuminas then reveals that they have noticed some strange changes in this area, including the fact that there are magic beasts in this area. This makes Banaza realize that his purification magic must have worked back then. This shocks Illuminas as she realizes that Banaza is the man behind Fenri's brother Fengarol's death. Even though Fenris knew about it, she kept quiet because she believed that it was her brother's fault for being too weak. Suddenly, Bela Rasa and the others appear out of nowhere and apologize for eavesdropping. With no other option left, Illuminas challenges Banaza to a battle, only to get folded in mere seconds. Now that the matter is resolved, Banaza reveals everything to Bela Rasa and the others, stating that he kept this fact a secret because he was afraid that it might trouble them. 
even though it is their moral duty to report Fenris to the castle, Bailarasa and the others decide not to because they owe her a lot. Just then, Fenris senses massive dragons heading towards them with Illuminas leading them. Bonaza, however, gets insanely excited after seeing them which shocks her. Seeing his carefree behavior, Illuminas instructs the dragons to attack him, but Banaza absolutely obliterates them with his holy magic. He also helps the muscle mommy to acquire the dragon slayer skill and enhance her level. Seeing all this, the demon lord decides to confront Banaza himself. Banaza reinforces a barrier that informs them about demons as Fenris further reassures him that she'll kick anyone's ass who trespasses this barrier. Banaza, on the other hand, is still concerned about the fact that he killed Fenri's brother, but her massive melons divert his attention. Meanwhile, Belarasa and the others are still shocked that their useless comrade acquired the title of Dragon Slayer that easily. Hearing all this, Belaras heads into the forest to hunt some magic beasts which makes them believe that she's such a stoic person. Belarasa, however, is crying like a little bitch because she wants the Dragon Slayer title as well. According to her, this title is so damn prestigious that it can turn a commoner into a noble. Just then, a guy approaches her from behind and questions about Banaza. Bailarasa questions his relationship with Banaza and Fenris as the guy tells her that he's related to Fenris. This makes her realize that he's someone from the demon army and unsheathes her sword. With no other options, the man chooses to go without anything and requests her to carry his message to Fenris. He identifies himself as Gozal. Just thereafter, Banaza and Fenris enter and question her about the person. According to Banaza, Bailarasa was truly speaking to the Dark One, which surprises her and makes her wet herself. The next day, he pays them a visit, and Banaza invites him into their house. The Dark One is surprised to see Banaza maintain his composure in front of him. Bailarasa also confronts the Dark One and pisses herself once again. The Dark One instructs her to sit beside him as they have some tea. Without wasting any time, the Dark One offers Banaza to join his ranks and defeat the humans who politely refuses his offer, stating that he doesn't know shit about this world and doesn't want to fight. The Dark One then explains the past and tells him that this war has been going on for 500 years. He further tells him that the first Dark One was a reincarnate from another world and was rejected by the humans of that time. According to him, demons accepted that outsider and this led to an all-out war between them. Amidst all this, Bailarasa is reconsidering her past decisions. In response to this, Banaza asks if the Dark One wants to stop the war as the Dark One affirms that even though he doesn't aspire to rule the world, he still won't stand the humans killing his people. He keeps pestering Banaza, only to get brutally rejected just like my crush rejected me. Besides Banaza, the Dark One is quite fascinated by Bailarasa who was sitting beside him all this time. Well. She ends up falling unconscious, and upon waking up after two days, she comes across the Dark One who is having breakfast with Banaza and Fenris. The Dark One keeps visiting them after this and Bailarasa refuses to meet him every time. Meanwhile, some knights report to the ugly king that a demon has been visiting Banaza for quite some time now. This makes them speculate that he must be conspiring with the demons and orders his army to invade him. Just then, the useless hero appears at the spot and demands to lead this army himself and subjugate Banaza. Meanwhile, Illuminus questions the Dark One regarding his plans regarding Banaza, asserting that it is dangerous to visit that guy alone. The Dark One, however, deems Banaza far more reasonable than the King of Clarod and wants to win him over at any cost. With all of this going on, Banaza is planning to sell some stuff in the town to make some living. Fenri suggests that he should have accepted the offer from the king and wonders if he refused because of her. Banaza assures her it wasn't because of her and further asserts that he doesn't want to fight anyone with his overwhelming abilities. Just then, the useless hero appears at the spot and offers Banaza two choices. He wants him to serve under him and become a knight. Otherwise, he will subjugate him for conspiring against the kingdom. The hero is actually quite delusional and thinks that he's some big shot, but Banaza brutally rejects his offer. The hero even threatens to put Bailarasa and the others behind the bar for conspiring against the kingdom. The wannabe Kirito keeps pestering him and with no other option left, Banaza decides to pack his stuff and leave this place. Seeing this, Bailarasa and the useless girls also decide to join them. According to them, their time with Banaza and Fenris has changed them completely as previously, they used to believe that demons are evil and must be eliminated. However, now their opinion has changed completely and they don't want to fight without any reason. With this, Banaza uses teleportation magic and teleports his entire home to a different place. 
This shocks the hero and his army since they haven't witnessed teleportation magic utilized over such a large scale. In the meantime, the Dark One also appears at the spot and a random NPC recognizes him as the demon who has been visiting Banaza. Seeing that Banaza's home is entirely gone, the Dark One speculates that the humans must have killed them and gets enraged. He then instructs his entire army to mobilize and destroy the entire kingdom. Seeing all this, the hero pisses his pants and escapes. In the meantime, Banaza and the others have established their new home at a place far away from the royal capital. The demon army is wreaking havoc over the entire country and have reached the northern stronghold as well. A knight reports all this to the ugly king who questions him regarding the hero. The knight informs him that the pathetic hero is hiding in the southern stronghold after pissing his pants. With no other option left, the minister suggests that they cast purification. The Dark One has also received a report regarding this and instructs Illuminus to retreat from the army because he doesn't want any demon to get caught in this. Meanwhile, the mages and the ugly king, who is seemingly not as useless as he looks, cast the purification magic to eradicate the demons. With all of this going, Banaza returns back home with Fenris waiting for him at the doorstep. She attempts to seduce him, but Banaza refuses to give in to his nasty desires and decides to have lunch. During lunch, Fenris questions him regarding his affairs in the town as Banaza tells her that he hasn't found any business partner yet, but he is optimistic. Just then, Blossom announces that she's thinking of selling vegetables in the town because she has been way too useless lately. Violary also announces that she'll breed horses as Blossom informs them that she used to be horse caretaker before becoming a knight. Hearing all this, Bailarasa realizes just how pathetic and useless she actually is. In the meantime, the purification magic was successful and the kingdom has somehow managed to drive away the Dark One's army. According to the minister, it will take around three months for the spell to wear off and this will grant them enough time to make preparations. However, they had to pay a massive price for this since all their mages are mana depleted now and need two months for full recovery. Even the ugly king is unconscious because he got ahead of himself and participated in the purification spell. With no other option left, the princess announces to assume her father's position according to the law. As her first decrees, she strips away the useless hero from his title and banishes him from the castle. She decides to consult the oracle to discuss their future endeavors. After this, a knight throws away the trash hero alongside his ugly lackey. The hero attempts to argue, but the knight doesn't give a shit about it and leaves. Later that night, Banaza expresses his gratitude to Fenris for always staying by his side and helping him. The following day, Bailarasa and the others suggest that Banaza and Fenris go on a date. They want them to leave the household work to their useless asses and enjoy their time together. Banaza hesitates in the beginning, but is reminded that they are married. Now, he has no other option, but to agree. As they are strolling in the market, Banaza wants to buy a present for Fenris and asks her about it. Following thorough consideration, they decide upon a gemstone brooch that matches Fenris' hair color. Fenris keeps staring at her brooch the entire night which makes Bailarasa and the others realize that the date was a success. Later that night, Fenris attempts to seduce Banaza once again, but my man refuses to give in to his nasty desires and sleeps with her melons pressing on her back. Meanwhile, the useless hero and his ugly lackey have managed to infiltrate the castle and attempt to steal the treasure. The ugly lackey questions if he has given up on being the hero as the shameless hero tells her that he does not plan on living as a commoner in this world. He keeps searching for something that can defeat the Dark One and redeem his title as the hero. Just then, a mysterious voice instructs him to release it if he desires power. The voice further provokes him to draw a weird sword and being the ugly dumbass he is, the hero draws out the sword. Suddenly, a woman appears out of nowhere and introduces herself as Haya, the Jinn of primordial light and darkness. Seeing that the hero has released him, Haya offers to grant him three wishes. With all of this going on, the princess has summoned the oracle Ursula and seeks revelation regarding their next move. Suddenly, a mysterious collar appears around their necks which shocks them. The princess immediately realizes that someone must have unsealed the jinn and instructs the knights to capture them. The oracle and the princess explain the presence of a jinn and how it grants wishes in exchange for sacrifices. With no other option left, the good-for-nothing princess asks the oracle to guide her. According to the oracle, they must search for the real hero who is hiding somewhere. The ministers immediately realize that she must be talking about Banaza. The princess then decides to visit Banaza herself. In the meantime, Banaza manages to strike a deal with a local swordsmith. Seeing all this, Bailarasa gets shocked and wonders how Banaza is perfect at everything. 
Fenris tells her that he was a traitor in his previous world which makes Balarasa envy their relationship. Fenris then reveals that the Dark One has taken quite a liking to her disgusting self and that she might have a chance with him. On their way back, Fenris urges Banaza to spend some time with her as well now that he's busy with work. Just then, the Jin Haya appears at the spot and introduces herself. The pathetic hero had actually asked her to kill Banaza as his first wish. Just as Haya is about to strike Banaza, Fenris comes in their way and gets slashed instead. The Jin keep attacking them, but Banaza's automatic defense system protects him. Banaza attempts to heal her, but all in vain as the Jin strikes him with her most powerful attack. Much to her surprise, the attack has no effect on him. All of his infuriated Banaza to the point that he turns into an edgelord and decides to beat the living shit out of her. My man Banaza just wanted to protect Fenris because she was the only person who stayed by his side and believed in a pathetic loser like him. Even though Banaza shunned her away in the beginning, their relationship turned into something special. Even after knowing that Banaza killed her elder brother, Fenris loved him and protecting Fenris became his entire purpose in this unfamiliar world. After being struck with Haya's magic, Banaza has also acquired primordial light and dark magic. He utilizes time reversal to bring back Fenris from the dead which shocks Haya. She cannot comprehend how a mere human can use time reversal magic and before she could say anything, Banaza pulls an Eren Jaeger and smacks her right in the face. He keeps hitting Haya without hesitation and none of her spells seem to work on Banaza. Just as she appraises his skills, it is revealed that Banaza actually possesses infinite skills, but his dumbass thought that he's just a pathetic loser. Make sure to not become an illiterate pathetic loser like Banaza and complete your assignments on time. As Banaza is toying around with Haya, Fenris awakens as Balarasa tells her that she is alive owing to Banaza's magic. She then notices Banaza beating the living shit out of Haya and gets excited, but immediately remembers the time when he spared her because he didn't want to fight. She realizes that a kind-hearted person like him would never want something like this. Meanwhile, Haya is literally begging Banaza to forgive her sorry ass, but gets brutally rejected, just like my crush rejected me. Just then, Fenris appears out of nowhere and hugs Banaza from behind. She reveals that the reason she fell for him was because of his kindness, and that she doesn't want him to lose that part of his personality because of her. Seeing that Fenris is alive, Banaza hugs her and completely ignores Haya. Meanwhile, the princess and some worn-out mages have teleported to the town where Banaza lives. The princess instructs her useless knights to protect the mages while she searches for the true hero. Suddenly, the collar around their necks breaks apart which shocks them. The princess believes that the jinn must have failed to fulfill her task. With all of this going on, the useless hero is now trapped inside the dungeon with knights chasing after him. Just then, a mysterious black smoke appears and takes over the ugly lackey's disgusting body. She then introduces herself as the Grand Magus of Midnight Damalinas and transforms the ugly hero into a massive monkey. She then decides to punish the royal family that sealed her away. Meanwhile, Banaza heals Haya which shocks her and she questions her reason behind it as Banaza tells her that Fenis is fine. Just then, Balarasa appears at the spot and asks what will they do with Haya because they cannot hand her over to the castle knights. Banaza suggests that it would be better to seal her in the castle's treasury. This further shocks her since Banaza is not supposed to know where she came from and questions this as well. Banaza reveals that he peeked into her memories to uncover the truth. He further asserts that if they hand her over to the castle, something similar might happen again. Suddenly, Fenris appears out of nowhere and suggests that she becomes Banaza's servant. She states that they cannot rely on the castle to keep an eye on her, but her real intention is to keep her as an asset. Banaza asks if she would be fine with her joining their puny family since she basically killed her. Fenris tells him that she lost owing to her own weakness. Having exhausted all alternatives, Banaza resolves to take her on as his servant after Haya pledges her allegiance to him and vows to refrain from taking any lives. Banaza subsequently expresses regret for his earlier actions, causing Haya to blush inexplicably. He then wonders if they can use time reversal magic to repair the town, but Haya votes against this, she also urges him to not use that spell ever again because it can disturb the space-time matrix or some shit like that. She also reveals that Banaza actually possesses infinite skills and can utilize total acquisition magic. This makes him capable of utilizing any type of magic once he's hit with it. With no other option left, Banaza restores the town with restoration magic. Later on, they take Haya back to their home where she introduces herself to Blossom and the others. 
They literally piss themselves after knowing that a literal djinn will live alongside them from now on, but Bailarasa reassures them that it'll be fine. Following this, Bonaza apologizes to Bailarasa for scaring the living shit out of her and reveals that he doesn't know how to utilize his powers. In response to this, Bailarasa tells him that Banaza made her realize how important it is to not blindly follow something and always seek reason to use your power. Later that night, Banaza notices that Fenri seems a bit worried and questions her regarding this. Suddenly, Fenri forces him into a seductive position even though they could have been talking while sitting. She inquires whether Banaza plans to return to his former world and implores him to bring her along. Upon hearing this, Banaza reassures her that he has no intention of going back and proposes marriage to her. Both of them then kiss under the night sky and before Banaza could reveal his holy sword, Haya appears in their room. This makes them wonder if she overheard everything they said to which she replies positively. Even though she wanted to fulfill her own nasty desires, she makes an excuse that she was keeping an eye on Banaza as her servant. Hearing this, Banaza forbids her from doing this and have some common sense if she wants to live with them. The princess keeps searching for Banaza as she wanders around different shops and questions people regarding him. Meanwhile, Banaza and the useless freeloaders are having dinner as Fenris reveals that Haya helped her with it. Haya boasts that she wanted to do everything with magic, but Fenris refused since she wants to cook for Banaza herself. Instead, she wants her to clean the house and do laundry for them. Upon hearing this, Bailarasa and the others feel even more useless and pathetic since they were responsible for doing these tasks and now, they have nothing to offer. To prove their worth, all of them come up with some ideas like Blossom wants to cultivate some vegetables and Bailary decides to raise horses. Even though she wanted to become a coachman, all she can do is raise horses. Just as she is thinking about this, the horny horses get turned on and start licking her which turns her on as well. Meanwhile, Lali Bolano apologizes to her father and brother for being a pathetic loser who failed to become a knight. She then reminisces about the time when Banaza taught her magic and realizes that she actually wants to become a magician. Just then, a magic beast starts wreaking havoc at the fields and even targets Bolano who somehow manages to protect herself. Despite this, Bailarasa's blind ass asks if they are alright and proceeds to do nothing as usual. Bailary then utilizes her horse riding skills to calm down the monster and saves the day. This makes her realize that she is not that useless. She then asks if it would be possible to acquire some more land as Bailarasa tells her that Banaza might be able to buy some more. With all of this going on, Banaza and Fenris are finally enjoying some free time in the town as Banaza wants to sell some stuff. Now that they are a married couple, Fenris comments that they can flirt with each other as much as they want. This makes Banaza blush since no one had ever flirted with his bitchless ass in his previous life. No wonder he doesn't want to go back. Following this, Banaza sells some salamander skin to a local trader who offers him magic gems in return and Banaza chooses the prettiest one. Meanwhile, Fenris is standing outside the shop as suddenly, the entire town gets covered in dark clouds and an ugly monster appears from the sky. Sensing the danger, Banaza rushes outside and notices the monster as well. It turns out Damalin is the apricot and the hero turned monkey are the ones behind it. The evil which immediately gets rid of the knights protecting the princess as in the meantime, Haya also appears at the spot. She had also sent some evil entity and rushed towards the town. According to her, Damalin is the evil once used to rule over the Clarode kingdom as the strongest mage, but she was defeated by the hero of that time and sealed pedestal of the sword where Haya was sealed as well. Hearing this, Fenris blames all of this on Haya who accepts the responsibility and offers to defeat Damon Linus herself. Meanwhile, Damalinus wants to get rid of the princess as soon as possible, but Haya interferes just in time and saves her sorry ass. Damon Linus mocks Haya for being a useless jinn who cannot even grant wishes, only to get cooked immediately. Haya reminds her that a mere human cannot deal any damage to her, but Damon Linus is way too dumb to understand this and keeps attacking her. As a last resort, she turns the ugly monkey into a massive monster which scares the living shit out of the princess. Suddenly, the monkey turns back to normal and it turns out, Banaza has dispelled her magic. Seeing this, Haya apologizes for getting him involved in all this and to make up for it, she gets rid of Damon Linus by absorbing her into her own body and turns the monkey back to his human form. They decide to leave the hero to the knights since he is unconscious. Just then, the princess introduces herself as Elizabeth Clarode and offers Banaza to become the hero, but gets brutally rejected. Banaza states that he won't be able to fight sincerely for humans and that he's already happy with his current life. In short, he doesn't give a shit about the kingdom and its people. 
After doing so much, the princess gives up like I gave up on my dreams. Anyways, as Banaza and the others head back home, Bileri asks him to acquire more land so they can cultivate vegetables and breed magic beasts. This way, they can utilize the magic beast to sell vegetables in the town and won't have to rely on Banaza. Hearing all this, Banaza agrees to negotiate with the town lord, but Bailarasa and the others want to handle this themselves. Banaza then reveals the amount it takes to buy such land which blows their mind. With no other option left, Banaza offers to buy the land for them and in exchange, he asks them to pay 30% of the money they get from that land. With all this settled, Bileri and Blossom get to work. Banaza asks Blossom to grow some vegetables that are hard to grow in this area since he can control the weather. Blossom, however, refuses, stating that she doesn't want to rely on him and wants to do everything herself. Just then, Haya appears at the spot and offers the same thing, only to get rejected by Blossom. Suddenly, Lolly Bolano also appears and endorses Blossom to agree because she wants to see Haya use magic. It is revealed that Bolano has been hired as a teacher at a magic academy which makes everyone happy. With this, all of this has been settled down and they have figured out what they want to do. Banaza also reveals that he wants to open his own store in the town which excites Fenris. Following all this, the scene shifts to Belarasa getting married to someone and that person is none other than the Dark One, Gozal. With the entire cheering for them, Illuminas announces that they will conquer the entire world as their wedding present. Belarasa refuses, but Gozal persists and as he is about to kiss her, Belarasa wakes up from this horrific dream. She gets insanely flustered and wonders why she's having such dreams even though she doesn't give flying Fs about the Dark One. The following morning, as Fenris and Belarasa are cooking something, Fenris notices Belarasa's pale face and questions if something is wrong. Although hesitant, Belarasa tells her that she's been having nightmares recently and being a dumbwit, Fenris takes them as a sign of love. She concludes that Belarasa must be in love with someone. Just then, Bolano and the others also appear at the spot and start teasing her. According to them, that special someone must be the Dark One since he used to visit them a lot because of her. Hearing all this, Bailarasa gets flustered and makes some lame excuses. Suddenly, the conversation shifts to how Fenris and Banaza fell in love as Fenris explains that she never thought about it and the reason she fell for him was his naiveness. Just then, Banaza reveals himself and it turns out he was listening to all this which embarrasses Fenris. Suddenly, Banaza receives a signal from the barrier he had forged to keep demons away from the town. With all of this going on, a mysterious guy is standing outside the town like he's lost. Meanwhile, the ministers report to the princess that the gold coins they received from Banaza are actually road gold coins that are issued by the castle. Previously, Banaza had offered the princess some gold coins to compensate for town repair. Despite being a princess, the shameless woman accepts the coins like a desperate gold digger. With this, the princess and the others have realized that the useless hero they had summoned and banished is actually Banaza. At this point, all they can do is apologize for their deeds. Amidst all this, the pathetic hero and his ugly lackey are hiding from the castle guards. The ugly lackey reminds him that they are now fugitives as well as thieves since they stole the bottomless bag from some treasure box. The hero explains that he took the bag as compensation for the prize he was offered for saving the kingdom. Well. His luck isn't that great since he only manages to find a drill dozer shovel in the bag, but that still allows him to hide from the knights by creating a hole as deep as your understanding of quantum physics after watching one YouTube video. With all of this going on, Illuminous reports to the Dark One regarding their inability to locate Banaza so far. She further postulates that they must have left the kingdom, but the Dark One clarifies that teleportation magic cannot take you to places you haven't been to, so they couldn't have left the kingdom. Upon hearing this, Illuminous asserts that it would be unwise to prioritize searching Banaza instead of focusing on the main battle. She further explains that they can use magic beasts to spread militia and eventually take over the castle, but the Dark One is still persistent. He explains that Banaza can single-handedly destroy their entire army, so finding him takes priority. He then apologizes to Illuminous for being a brat and explains that he doesn't want to sacrifice his own people to win this battle. After this, another demon reports to Lord Ugarde that the Dark One is trying to recruit a human into the Dark Army instead of focusing on the battle. This infuriates Ugarde as he believes that Gozal has gone soft and eventually decides to seize the throne to become the Dark Lord himself. Meanwhile, Banaza and Fenris are shopping in the town as Fenris suggests that they should have lunch together now that they are alone. On their way, they come across an old hag named Haldi who is abandoning her shop because her suppliers lost their lives during the previous war. 
This makes Banaza realize just how devastating wars can be and as they are discussing all this, Belarasa appears at the spot. She offers to treat them to lunch which Banaza politely accepts even though Fenris doesn't seem quite happy about it. Suddenly, Haya also appears there and warns them regarding the presence of a strong demon. It turns out that the demon is actually Gozalan with this, all of them have lunch together. During the lunch, Gozal explains that he usually visits such towns to gather intel on humans which makes Belarasa question if he is gathering intel on them right now. In response to this, Gozal replies positively which infuriates Belarasa, but Banaza calms her pathetic ass down. Gozal explains that the demons are a threat to humans owing to their militia and have been oppressed for a long time. Being the Dark One, he cannot accept such oppression. This makes Banaza realize that this conflict is deeper than he thought and with this, Gozal leaves them alone. On their way back, they come across Bolano and the others as Banaza keeps thinking about Gozal's remarks and how it can be resolved. As they are walking back, Banaza suddenly hugs Fenris from behind and expresses his gratitude for being a part of his life. Meanwhile, the hero and his lackey are attempting to escape the hole they dug themselves. Eventually, the ugly lackey reaches the top, but her massive melons prevent her from getting out. Just then, the hero gazes upon her overpowered ass and loses his control. As Fenris prepares dinner, Bela Rasa and the others praise her cooking skills as Fenris credits Miss Milano for all this. She even went to meet her during her visit to Hautau Town where Fenris expressed her gratitude for teaching her. Hearing all this, Milano decides to teach her family meals including meals for babies just in case Banaza gets horny. As they are conversing, someone knocks at the door and Banaza rushes to open it. It turns out that Princess Elizabeth is even more clingy than my little brother and is here to convince Banaza once again. This time around, she addresses him as Banaza instead of Fleo, which makes him realize that they have discovered his identity. Being the goody two-shoes he is, Banaza invites her inside where Bailarasa serves her tea. She then asks Bailarasa and the other freeloaders to leave the room since she wants to discuss something with Banaza. Fenris, however, refuses to leave and Banaza also insists that Fenris stays with them. With no other option left, the princess has to agree. After Bailarasa leaves, Elizabeth apologizes to Banaza for all the wrongdoings their kingdom had done to him and begs for his forgiveness. Being a Chad, Banaza refuses to accept her apology and questions the reason behind all this. The princess then reveals the whereabouts of her army which is top secret information. This shocks Banaza as he cannot comprehend why she is telling him all this. The princess further tells him that the effect of purification will wear off soon and their mages are yet to recover their mana. Using their troops, they can prevent the demon army from invading the royal capital, but that will leave some towns vulnerable. Since Banaza has refused to join their army, she wants him to at least protect these vulnerable towns. This infuriates Fenris as she doesn't want Banaza to protect these ignorant fools who treated him like trash. The princess further reveals that she is planning to arrest the king for unlawful appointment of the false hero and will lead the kingdom herself. Fenris interprets this as the princess using Banaza as a stepping stone to the throne, but Banaza calms her down. He has realized that the princess just wants him to guarantee that he won't join the demon army as the princess also agrees. By revealing classified information to him, the princess wants to make sure that Banaza will keep quiet and not cause any havoc. She tells him that she just wants to protect those towns and urges Banaza to help them. Meanwhile, the useless hero and his lackey have finally managed to escape the hole, but now they have to get rid of the knights chasing after them. Amidst all this, the lackey gets hungry and the hero offers her some food. At least she is loyal, unlike my pathetic ex. At this point, the hero is shocked that she is still following him around, contemplating the reason behind it. In response to this, the lackey questions the reason he is keeping her by his side is getting rid of her as an easier option. This makes the hero blush and as they are conversing, a weird spider appears out of nowhere and traps them. Just then, a demon appears out of nowhere and kidnaps them as sacrifices for something. Later that night, Banaza rethinks his decision of not helping the princess and eventually decides to help them. The following day, the demon army ambushes a nearby town where the citizens are instructed to evacuate. Despite the warning, a girl remains behind as she is collecting berries. Just as the demons are about to attack her, Banaza and Fenris appear at the spot and forges a barrier to keep the demons away. At this point, Banaza is helping the kingdom without any compensation and Fenris deems him way too soft. Banaza clarifies that the moment he agreed to negotiate with the princess, he had lost. Fenris misinterprets this as Banaza agreeing to marry the princess and gets shocked. 
Bonazza reassures her that he won't be marrying the princess. As they are conversing, a cyclops appears at the spot and boasts to obliterate Bonazza's barrier. According to Fenris, the Cyclops are considered the strongest tribe among the demons and serve directly under the Dark One. He recognizes Fenris as Lupin and mocks her brother for dying a meaningless death. Hearing this, Fenris decides to take down Cyclops by herself and challenges him to a battle. The massive monster keeps swinging around his humongous weapon, but fails to hit Fenris even once. Meanwhile, Fenris bites off its muscles since she doesn't want to kill him. The demon mocks her for being too weak, but Fenris clarifies that she doesn't want to kill and is taking it easy on him. She then utilizes gravitation magic to pin down the demon, eventually taking him down. Seeing this, the Cyclops instructs other demons to ambush her, but Banaza intervenes just in time and traps all of them. He then teleports all of them to Delweza Forest and offers them to surrender without any battle. Fenris suggests that they should have injured them to scare them off, but Banaza refuses to injure anyone. He asserts that this will further alleviate the hatred between humans and demons. Just then, the villagers of the town express their gratitude towards Banaza for saving their sorry asses. Meanwhile, the princess has also received intel that a mysterious adventurer is saving towns from the demon army as she immediately realizes that Banaza must be behind this. With all of this going on, the Dark One receives intel that his brother Ugarde is staging a coup against him and has already seized the throne room. Hearing this, he Dark One rushes back to the castle where Ugarde has kidnapped the hero and his lackey is sacrifices to borrow the evil god's powers.